Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to get the best DS emulator out there. This is one DS emulator that I really really like and a lot of people just consider it the best DS emulator out there. First thing we'll do is we'll search for this PC, right click properties, and check out what gear I'm using. I'm using Intel i7 quad core CPU, 16GB RAM, and Windows 10 64-bit. Next I'll search for DXDIAG for searching for my graphics card that I'm using on this laptop. I'm using Intel HD graphics integrated, 8GB approximate total memory, as well as an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M with approximately 12 gigabytes of memory. Now this laptop is built for gaming, so you may get different results if you're just running on your everyday laptop. I'll tell you how later on in the video to improve your speed of the DS emulator if you have some problems. The DS emulator is called Desume. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's not very important, but this is definitely the best DS emulator out there. We'll go to their page, I'll leave a link in the description, right click the download page, and we will select the binary for Windows or Macintosh. Mine is Windows 64-bit. We'll right click and open it in a new tab. It brings us to a source, source forge link and we can download the DS emulator. And I have it already downloaded, so I'll just leave it there. Next up is we will go to Emu Paradise. That stands for emulator. And we will go to this link that I'll leave in the description. It contains many DS ROMs that you can use to load games onto your DS emulator. We will open up Pokemon Black and on the number 8 in quick navigation, you can click on it to get to the download link. It'll be this orange link. You can right click and open it in a new tab. Next, it says we are preparing your download. You can just scroll down to the direct download part and click on it. It will take 15 seconds before this download propagates. And it's approximately 100 megabytes. You will need an extracting program to extract the zip files. So I use 7-zip and I will download and install the 64-bit version, which I have already done. Once the download comes up, you can save it. But I already have it downloaded, so I will not save it a second time. We will now go to our desktop and extract the program in emulator. First up is Desume. We will right click and extract into its own folder with 7-zip. You can extract to the folder name. And once it's extracted, you can open up the folder and we'll see the contents of the emulator. It will have this executable. What I like to do is right click and create a shortcut on my desktop. for easy access. Afterwards, we can right click, rename this a little bit. I don't like having the dash shortcut at the end of the name of the shortcut. And we can open it up. It's a small screen. That's all there is to getting the DS emulator. Next up, we want to change some things on the DS emulator to make it more to our fitting. First, click on the view tab at the top. And then I always like to have it horizontal just because on a laptop screen, it looks better horizontal. We can go to the bottom right and extend the size of the window. So it looks nice and big. Now we can extract the Pokemon game. It's also a zip file. So we do the same thing. We use 7-zip to extract to the name of the folder. And once it's extracted, we will see the .nds file. What I like to do is I like to cut, right click, cut the file and place it into Desume's ROM folder. But 
if we open up the Desume folder, we don't see any ROMs folder. That's because first thing we need to do is we need to go to file and open, and then it will generate a ROMs folder for us. So once we open a ROM or attempt to, we have no ROMs in the ROM folder, so we cancel. This time I zoomed it in so you can actually see what I just did. And then afterwards, we'll see this ROMs folder suddenly appear within the, it's within the Desume folder. And we can paste our Pokemon ROM into the ROMs folder. This is a good place to just keep everything organized, keep all your ROMs in one place. And I'll just delete the zip file for the Pokemon game as well as the extracted folder because I don't need those folders anymore in the zip file. Now let's actually load the game. You can file, open, and we'll open Pokemon. Hit the open button. And it plays automatically. It loads and it should be nice and quick. Now in this part of the video, I'll show you the best parts of this DS emulator. What can it do and why is it considered one of the best, if not the actual best? Down, up, left, right on your arrow keys moves up, down, left, right. X is to press A, I believe. Z is for B, and then A, S is for X and Y. Enter is to start. Now the first thing that we see on the emulator is we have something called save state. Save state is the equivalent of quick save in many other games like Skyrim. You can have these states so that you can go back to any state with actually, without actually saving into the game. So I just hit save to slot 1 and if I actually accidentally X out of my DS emulator or someone restarts my computer by accident and I did not save yet, I can use this go open the game again where file recent ROM opens up the Pokemon game immediately then we can go to load state and we see that we have a date on one we can click on it and it just automatically goes to that point in time that we saved which is really really useful especially if you don't want to save the game and then you just have to quick save it with these save slots we can have up to 10 of them I believe next up is improving your speed of the game. If you're seeing very slow speeds on the DS emulator, you can change the frame rate. You want to have limit frame rate on. I have zero for never skipping frames. And you can go put it on a higher number to skip some frames. Next up is emulation settings. Emulation settings, I'm using this enable advanced bus level to fix bugs, but it slows down the game if your computer doesn't handle it. You want to turn on CPU emulation mode, put a check, and set 100 to the fastest because enabling this will get you 0 to 50% speed ups, but the game may be a little bit buggier. Next up, if you're still seeing slowdowns on your game, you can open up the 3D settings. And for my case, I just leave all of this checked on fog textures because my computer is a gaming laptop and I can handle that 3D setting. So you can check off anything that you don't need, then hit OK. And last but not least, I'm using display method direct draw HW. You can try to change the direct draw to see if you'll get more power, more speed on your DS emulator so you can play your games. We'll look at the controller configuration so that you can know what controls are used for this DS emulator. It's your typical up, down, left, right. A, S, Z, X on your keyboard is for X, Y, A, B. And enter is to start. And those are basically the main controls on any DS that you would need to know. Select is for the right shift button. And of course, you can always change this. Click on one of the white boxes and hit your keyboard on any place that you want to change that key. You can hit OK or Cancel. I'm going to hit Cancel. And last but not least, we will look at the hotkey configuration. The best part of this emulator, increase speed, decrease speed. I don't want to press X and have to wait through million of text boxes. So equals 
and minus are to change the target FPS up and down. We can change it to four times speed. And now the text boxes go so quickly. And of course you can always drop the speed below one or back to normal. This is a great way to just be, especially in Pokemon, you need to be walking around everywhere and the walking speed can be a little bit slow so you can change the target FPS up or down. Thank you.